Hello, Greg here with Online Tennis Instruction. And this is probably the most requested video that we get after our clinics. So when we do our live clinics, we put players through a dynamic stretch, a dynamic warm-up before we start hitting. And this is very important that you start to develop this routine before you play or before you train because it can help reduce the occurrence of injury, get your body properly warmed up and work on some flexibility. So before you start playing, you want to move through stretches. That's called a dynamic stretch. So I'm going to show you some, some, some warm-ups that we do. And there's so many different variations, but this is a pretty good standard one to get started with. So the first thing you want to do, you always want to be sufficiently warmed up. So you actually want to be jogging. You can do two, three laps around the court, or you can just simply run from this double sideline to the far double sideline. And you can just run going forward and then you can back pedal back. Now when you back pedal back, make sure you lift your ankles up so you reduce the risk of, of falling and tripping. So be very careful. And you want to do that about three to four times going all the way to the far uh, doubles line and back. Once you've done that, we then want to warm up the calf muscles here and the soleus. This is very important. And we're going to do heel raises as we're stepping forward. Now, a lot of people struggle with that. So simply all you're really doing is just start with your feet together like this. And you're just lifting your heels off the ground. So I'm going to show you from the side like this. So essentially what you're doing. And this actually next exercise will help you with weight transfer on your ground strokes. So you want to step forward with your heel. Feel how the weight is back. And then you want to shift the weight forward. See how my chest is going forward with the weight of the ball of the foot. Now focusing on the front leg, I'm just going to gently raise the heel off the ground, create a nice stretch. Now you want to gradually increase that height as you get more and more warmed up. Then you would step with the next foot. See my weight is back, I roll up, come up on the, the ball of the foot with the front foot. Now you notice both, you come up on the toes of both feet, but you're working the front leg. So you can do that, and you do this to that middle line and back. Because right? tennis is a multi-directional sport, so that's why we have you do direction changes in your warm-up as well. So that'll be the, the, the first, the first uh, drill. The next one, we're going to do foot taps, just to help your foot speed, where you're just going to tap the ball of your foot on the ground like this. Find the rhythm, and then once you have the rhythm, you want to increase the speed and the frequency. And the moment you feel like you're slowing down, then you would switch to the other foot. And you'll find in the beginning that one foot is better than the other. But as you do this more and more, the, the other foot will catch up. And this is a drill that Ian Meyer likes to do, and it really helps with your foot-to-ground contact. So you'll do toe taps, and you do two to three sets on each foot. After that, we'll just do a, a shuffle, side shuffle. Keep your head nice and level, knees are slightly bent. We like to add some arm circles just to add a little more complexity, but also hit those shoulders. So you can side shuffle to that middle line, and then you would switch the direction of the arm circles coming back. And you would do that twice. All right, the next one we'll do can openers to take care of those hips. So you're going to face that direction. You have your thumbs out in front. That way you'll eliminate too much movement from the shoulders. You want to isolate the hip movement, right? You want to think of uh, some professional players you can think of who had hip problems. It's very important you take care of this. So thumbs like this, turn your knee out so towards what would be the back fence. And think of hurling up and over where your knee faces out in front. And then the right knee goes towards the net up and over. And you want to do this all the way to that middle line. Once you get to the middle line, you'll go backwards back. Instead, this time your knee goes forward. It's almost like you're hurling back over your own hip. And pretend you're placing that foot on a tightrope behind you. Right? And going back is a little more tricky. And you may find you're not, you won't have as much mobility. But as you do this over time, it will improve and get better and better. The next one, we're going to step out and work on those groins. So you want to step out like this. Now, just be careful. You don't want your knee going over your ankle or over your toes too much. But kind of sit into it a little bit. Feel a stretch right in here. And you will go over the other side. Feel it through here. You have your feet together. And then you would step out again. Feel on the inside here, inside on this leg. And you would do that until you get to the middle line. And then you will continue doing that back to your starting position. You know, the next one's a little bit challenging for um, your balance, so I'll give you two options. We call it um, the uh, head, hip, and heel. So you want to step forward like this, same, um, same hand, same foot, and you want to make a straight line between your head, your hip, and your heel, and you want to touch like this, going forward. Now, Dean always makes fun of me because I always fall over my right foot because you always have one, uh, one foot that's more dominant, and you will find that, but as you do this, 
you'll start to improve your balance. Now you can always ha hold on to a net if you need to. And you would do that from this position to the middle line, okay? Now, if you find it too difficult, you can just simply put your heel on the ground with a straight leg and try to touch your toes if you can to get closer and just alternate between one to the other. I do like the head, hip, and heel because it also works on your balance, right? Now, once you've done that, then you want to get into something a little more vigorous. So you have the option of doing high knees, keep your chest slightly forward, you want to drive the elbows back, this is about frequency, not how quickly you can get there. You want to go to the middle line and then you want to go backwards back. Now if you have any uh, injuries or you're not able to do that, then you can also just bring the knee to your chest and as you do that you actually will see I'm going to come up on the ball of my foot. You can walk your way to that middle line and then turn around and go back facing forward with that one. Then we'll do butt kicks, so you want to try to keep the knee below your hip. Okay, and then you can just do this to that middle line and then you can actually go backwards back or if you prefer you can just turn around and do it going forward, right? Now if that's uh, too much you can just, somebody just kind of touch your ankles there just to try to get a little bit of um, a stretch here through, through your quads. Okay, so once you've done that then uh, we'll go and just do a little bit of a stretch here with your lats. So grab your thumb like this and just kind of reach over from one side to the other. And you know that feels good. I know from people's reactions in the clinics, you may do about four or five times to each side. Then uh, just a good stretch from Jody. You want to get a little bit of extension through your mid back. So you're going to push your sternum forward, grab your thumb like this, reaching up, and just kind of just little pulses. Now, it may not look like I'm doing much, but you'll feel a little bit of extension through your mid back, which will be really good for your shoulder kind of helping you set your shoulder back. Okay, once you've done that, we'll get into our universal stretch. And this is the one, if you don't have any time, you're late to the courts, this is the one you can do. And I'll just use this line just to kind of demonstrate. I'm going to try to go from one foot to the other. See how I'm replacing one foot on that line, or very close to it. Once you've got that, arms straight, and then you want to... It's like we're saying, you hug in the world and then you give yourself a big hug and do it over and over for about 20. Now if you're about to serve you can also add some other stretches where you get your arms straight, you pull just above your um, elbow towards you and you just keep alternating, hold for about a second, feel a nice stretch right in here. Okay. You can also do your triceps, you're going to pull the elbow slightly back behind you and down, feel the stretch through here, not on your shoulder. You just kind of alternate between one arm to the other. You do about, about five on each arm. You can also do these arm circles where you relax the shoulders down and away from your ears. Small circles like this going forward. Gets a little rotator cuff muscles. Do about ten of those, or seven to ten. You can do a half circle, seven to ten. Full circle, about seven to ten of them. Relax the arms, shake them out like this. Relax the shoulders, thumbs back slightly, shoulders down away from your ears. And you do it in the opposite direction. Small little circles backwards, half circles, full circles. So again, doing between seven to nine with each set. Right, so there you have it. There's a very quick dynamic stretch. and something that when you get into it, it'll take you three, four, five minutes, but you want to start to do it each time before you play, each time you go out in the practice court.